well, with everything else that's going on in the world, you probably had no idea that September is Suicide Prevention Month. And if you're like most Christians, this is a subject that you find very profoundly troubling, but you have no idea how to tackle it on your own. Luckily for you, you don't have to. Today's video is about a book that was very recently written on the subject by an ER doctor who's also a Christian. I read through it and was very moved by it, and so today's video, I'm gonna share with you four really important things that you need to know from Dr. Sleeth's book called Hope Always how to be a voice for life in a culture of suicide. Hi, if we haven't met yet, my name is Lori, and if you are a Jesus-following woman who is sick and tired of the spiritual decline that you see happening all around you, affecting your kids and your communities and your country as a whole, but you really don't know what it is that you can do about it, then you are my people. We live in an incredibly challenging cultural moment, but that also gives us lots of opportunities to be an effective voice for God in this increasingly godless culture. If you're not sure how to do that, I have a resource for you called the 12 point checklist for becoming an effective voice for God. And you can grab your copy by going to the description box and clicking on the link that I've left there for you. Okay, the book, Hope Always by Dr. Matthew Sleep. The first reason that you should absolutely check out this book is because of the Hope Always toolkit that comes with the book. It gives churches and church leaders and church members um, a step-by-step -step guide, essentially, of coming together with practical things that they can do to be a resource, a haven, for people who are in the midst of deep depression and despair that often leads to suicide. And the second thing that I found so compelling and moving about this book is the sheer volume of facts and statistics that Dr. Sleeth uses in his book. For instance, did you know that women are more likely to attempt suicide than men, but when they do, they're more likely to survive it. Men, on the other hand, are less likely to attempt suicide, but when they do, they are far more likely to complete their attempt. And did you know that suicide is the second leading cause of death for people between the age of 10 and 34? Here's a really good statistic that you, Jesus following woman, need to know for your own family. People who believe in God are four to six times less likely to commit suicide than people who don't believe in God. Throughout the book, he mentions that faith is a protective factor against despair, depression, and suicide. So moms, keep taking those babies to church. And this probably was the most shocking statistic of all. Suicide has been trending upward in the last several years, but it seems that the rate of suicide as the numbers are presented aren't really telling us the whole story. In fact, it's much worse than it would initially appear. For instance, during the Great Depression era of the 1930s, we saw a really high spike of suicide rates because of the obvious economic crises that were going on um, in the world at the time. However, because there were so few medical and technological advancements, the majority of people who attempted suicide did not survive. There was no way for us to rescue them. But that is not the case today. So if we were to take all of the numbers of people who committed suicide in today's terms and transported them back to that era when we did not have the kinds of medical testing and we didn't have cell phones or 911 systems or the kinds of medical interventions that would help, help someone survive their suicide attempt, if all those people were transported back in time to that era, then Dr. Sleep suggests that based on his research and his numbers and his experience as an ER doctor, we would be looking now at a suicide rate that's almost 20 times today what it was back in the Great Depression. That is a horrifying and shocking number. In fact, he's convinced that all the, although the numbers don't actually tell the whole story because we do so often rescue people and save people from their suicide attempts, if we could see the bigger picture, we would see that the United States is in an absolute epidemic of despair and depression. And that leads us to point number three, why this book is so helpful and you and your church ought to read it, is because much of the entire book is aimed 
at educating and equipping and empowering Christians and the church to become a safe haven, a resource for people who are depressed so that we can be prepared to do something to help these people. In fact, he makes a great point that the church is the best equipped resource that we've got and yet it's the least utilized. And so as a result, he packs a ton of um, biblical stories and verses as well as personal stories as an ER doctor to help us and move us to a place where we are willing to become, we are willing to see our opportunities as the church to become a place of hope and rescue for the depressed. And last of all, chapter one is a good enough reason alone to read the whole book. Inside that first chapter, he presents a story called the tale of two patients, two different patients who come into his ER at two different times. And there is a plot twist between those two patients that pretty much sets up the entire rest of the book. So in honor of Suicide Prevention Month, I will put a link to the Hope Always Toolkit in the description box for you to go take a look at, as well as the Amazon link to the book. And I don't have an affiliate relationship with Amazon or the author. I just think it's an incredibly powerful and timely book that you as a Christian need to take and maybe even recommend to your church leaders. So before we go, I want you to know that if you are fighting this battle or someone you know and love is fighting this battle, you don't have to fight it alone. If you're fighting suicidal thoughts, please reach out to a pastor, a parent, a teacher, or some trusted individual. Just talking about what you're going through will help you stay focused and see hope on the other side. If you, if you don't know who you can call, there is a suicide prevention hotline and I will show that number on your screen. Please call that number and talk to somebody because it will help you. You don't have to fight this battle alone and you certainly don't have to lose this battle. It is a winnable battle. I know because I fought this battle myself. I had to get through a very dark period of time where I thought about taking my own life and I'm here to tell you that faith in Christ can help you see your way through to the other side and as soon as that video is ready i will upload it right here in the meantime talk to somebody read the book reach out to someone there is help available and as always keep thinking biblically praying unceasingly loving completely and speaking truthfully and i'll see you in the next video